have a little dreidel. I made it out of clay, and when it's dry and ready, oh dreidel, I shall play. Oh dreidel, dreidel, dreidel. Let me hear you. I made it out of clay, and when it's dry and ready, oh dreidel, I shall play. It has a lovely body with legs so short and thin. Happy game of dreidel, it drops in, then I win. Oh, dreidel, 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 I made it out of clay. And when it's dry and ready, oh, dreidel, I shall play. My dreidel's always dreidel. playful, yeah, right he loves to dance and spin. And when it gets all tired, it drops in, then I win. Oh, dreidel, dreidel, dreidel. I made it out of clay, and when it's dry and ready, no oh, dreidel I shall play. We wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Good tidings to you wherever you are, good tidings for Christmas and a Happy New Year. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Merry Christmas! Light one. Candle for the Maccabee children Give thanks that the light didn't die Light one candle for the pain they endured When their right to exist was denied Light one candle for the terrible sacrifice Justice and freedom demand Light one candle for the wisdom to know The peacemaker's time was at hand don't let the light go out, it lasted for so many years. Don't let the light go out, let it shine through our whole pain. Justice for all. Um, we have a special presentation tonight for the uh, 2022 Stewardship Award. And Mayor, we're on our way down. So tonight's um, first presentation is the Mayor's Stewardship Award. And since 2015, the Doylestown Borough Economic Development Advisory Board has acknowledged the outstanding stewardship of dedicated borough property owners through the Mayor's Stewardship Award. Um, all of this is done through a nomination process. And the final selection is done by the Economic Development Advisory Committee. So the award this evening goes to Rich and Lisa Chase from 396 Linden. So, um, and Rick Brown is going to come up and um, say a little bit before we give you the award, because actually the um, advisory group has much more expertise, can, can talk um, a little bit better about the award than I can. So why don't you all come up? Yes. Now let Rick say some words. Thank you. Well, it was nice of the mayor to think of us uh, to uh, make some remarks tonight. Um, uh, so on behalf of the advisory board, um, I'm looking around and seeing people here, and uh, I, I think people are probably um, familiar with the expression um, uh, you know, it's uh, not how you feel, 
It's how you look, mm -hmm. and you look marvelous. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the advisory board has, has uh, uh, given uh, this award for several years, or been involved with this award. I'll put it that way. Uh, and, um, the mayor has given the award. But um, the, um, the purpose of the award was to, as, as the mayor mentioned, to acknowledge those people that have been good stewards to their, their properties. Um, uh, in Doylestown, we're fortunate to have such a wonderful um, assemblage of uh, older buildings that are representative of many styles of architecture and uh, really give character and, and vitality to the, the borough. And uh, the maintenance of those and the, the, the cultivation of those over time is, is, is very important, especially in these times when <clears throat> we're fortunate to have this um, historic aspect to the borough uh, with these old buildings that we have, but also uh, given the times we live in, there are new uses that, that uh, are required and, and need to be applied, and how we go about doing that is, is important. And, and uh, in order to, important in, in terms of uh, keeping a, a, a cohesive and, and sort of um, a, a, a character, uh, maintaining a, a character to the, the the place, a very special place that we're I think we're all very fond of. So, um, uh, the purpose of the the uh, the program is to acknowledge those that have uh, uh, made improvements and 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 done things to their buildings and uh, kept them up and uh, added to them as as the chases have. Um, uh, and um, uh, just to, to make people aware of, of the importance of, of, of doing that. So I, I'm happy to have the opportunity to just say a few words um, regarding that. Uh, with respect to the Chases, uh, their house, uh, as you see there, was uh, built in uh, 1885, and uh, um, so it's almost uh, 140 years old, it's 137 years old. And uh, they have um, added to it, and uh, the uh, committee, when they went around, felt that their addition was a very sensitive one and, and one that contributed uh, uh, to the, um, the building itself, but also to the, the community as a whole. And they, they restored the house, and then they, they added to it, and uh, the committee was quite enthusiastic about how the, what they had done. So. That's about all I have to say. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. All the best. Thank you. I will make this official by presenting um, Lisa and Rich now with the 220 Stewardship Award from the borough. 2022. Would you like to say a couple words? Say something. Say a couple words. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, sure. We bought the house. We're living there. It's 140 years old, so it makes us feel much younger. <laughs> um, but uh, two things, really, when we did the renovation. One, we were able to get a photograph of the house from 1905. So a lot of the window selections and siding was based on those photos in 1905, mm -hmm. which was kind of important to us. And the previous owner left us a note who lived there. Left us a note on the counter the day we walked in, the day we left settlement. Mm -hmm. And it said, this is a great house with great bones, cherish it as much as we did. So it was kind of cool. That's all I got. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, Here. 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 <laughs> Get a cookie too. Yeah. <laughs> have, a cookie. have a cookie on the way by. <laughs> have a cookie on the way by. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and then we have um, one more award this evening, which is not on our agenda. 
And it actually is a surprise. As I was leaving the office on Friday, Erica runs out with this box. And um, we open it up there, and it's from the Pennsylvania Municipal League to the Honorable Elnora West. And it says, it's enclosed. It is for somebody who we already know, and it's very familiar to us. Um, enclosed is a plaque for this year's first place John Garner Jr. Civic Engagement Scholarship Award for Mary Frances McNulty. Oh, neat. <laughs> <laughs> Mary Frances. And Mary Frances had to write an essay on civic engagement yes. and available in civic engagement in the community in Doylestown. So they sent this, I'm calling this the obelisk. It's <laughs> <laughs> dangerous. And I am presenting you with the Pennsylvania Municipal League 39th Annual John A. Garner Jr. Civic Engagement Scholarship Award. <coughs> First place presented to Mary Frances McNulty, Villa nice. Joseph Marie High School, which apparently has moved to Doylestown Borough. <laughs> 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 well, thank you, Mayor. And I also want to thank all the Barrow Council members as well as the Barrow staff for allowing me to participate in the junior or in the Barrow Council as a junior council person last year. Um, it was a very rewarding experience, and I look forward to continuing my involvement in the community in the future. So, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> you need to move the seal. <laughs> we need a seal on a stand <laughs> so we can do photos. <clears throat> no, that's all right. Just, you gotta get the family photo, right? <laughs> Ceremony. Yes. Yeah, That's it. Well, okay. Yeah. Well, thank you, Ms. Next item on our agenda is the approval of minutes from our November 21st uh, council meeting. Do I have a motion to approve? So move. move. You have a second? Second. And any questions or comments from any members of council? Hearing none, any questions or comments from any members of the public? Hearing none, I'd like to call the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Madam Mayor, you had a little bit of exercise. Are you, do you have anything else? No, yeah, we have no report tonight. <laughs> Public safety, Mr. Frederick. Yes, I have several items, Mr. President. First is the authorization to draft and advertise an ordinance establishing residential permit parking on Union Street, Shule Avenue to Hamilton Street. Attached, please find a residential per permit parking study performed by the Central Bucks Regional Police Department. The study determined that Union Street between Shule Avenue and Hamilton qualifies, Hamilton Street qualifies for residential permit parking. Public Safety Committee held a public meeting on December 7th, 2022, to which all residents of these blocks were invited. As a result, uh, are recommending that council authorize the drafting and advertising of an ordinance establishing residential parking or residential permit parking on Union Street between Shul Avenue and Hamilton Street. If council wishes to follow the recommendation, it can do so by motion and I so move. Second. I have a motion and second. Do we have any questions or comments from any members of council? Hearing none, any questions or comments from any members of the public? Hearing none, I'd like to call the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. The, the second is the authorization to draft and advertise an ordinance restricting parking on Union Street between Shule Avenue and Hamilton Street. At the same December 7th meeting at which they discussed residential permit parking with Union Street's uh, residents, the Public Safety Committee discussed appropriate parking restrictions in this area for non-residential permit holders. As a result, the committee is recommending that council authorize the drafting and advertising of an ordinance restricting parking on Union Street between Shule Avenue and Hamilton Street.
to a maximum of two hours from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. If council wishes to, let me get to the rest of this, slide it up and down. Oh. <laughs> I'll get to that in a second. Here we go. Or can do so by motion. It can do so by motion, and I so move. <laughs> <laughs> I could not get that. To second. That. We have a motion and second. Do we have any questions or comments from any members of council? Hearing none, any questions or comments from any members of the public? Hearing none, I'd like to call the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, and the last, authorization to draft and advertise an ordinance eliminating parking on West Street, uh, Union to Doyle Elementary. The Public Safety Committee met with West Street residents on December 7th to discuss traffic calming on West Street at a September 2022 traffic study revealed speeds of 30 to 33 miles an, uh, per hour uh, between Union and Doyle Elementary School. Several options for traffic common were discussed with unanimous, unanimous, unanimous uh, preference in favor of proposal for five foot bike lanes on both sides of West Street, the option recommended by borough staff. A rendering of the proposal bike lanes is attached for your reference. The proposal will reduce traffic speed by narrowing, narrowing the vehicular cart cartway, which uh, while providing a new transportation and recreation amenity. In order to move forward with this project, existing rarely used parking on west side of West Street between Union and Doyle Elementary School needs to be eliminated. The Public Safety Committee is therefore recommending that council authority by the drafting and advertising of an ordinance to do so. If council wishes to follow the recommendation, it can do so by motion, and I so move. Second. We have a motion and second. Do we have any questions or comments from any members of council? Hearing none, any questions or comments from any members of the public? Hearing none, I'd like to call a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And the last is the monthly fire company report, monthly report. You have that in your packet, and we won't go through that. And that is the end of my report, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Frederick. <clears throat> Mr. Brown, Public Works. Yeah, we did not meet, but I did want to uh, just give a big um, congratulations and, and recognition of Public Works Department um, at the uh, tree lighting this year, which was immensely successful. Um, and thank them for my perch on top of the bucket truck for photos. And it's the first time a drone has ever lifted off and landed off that truck, too. So, um, <laughs> with that, I'll pass it over to Mr. El Ellinger. Uh, thank you. I'll, I'll be brief. We've just entered Area 5, which I'm glad to say is the last area of the nearly three month long leaf season. Um, we're on schedule. We should be actually completed by the end of tomorrow or the day after at the latest. Uh, it's gone fairly smoothly. All the equipment miraculously held up and will all have to be rebuilt after the season. But uh, all in all, it was a good, uh, a good leaf collection season. So that's in my report. Very good. Thank you. That's all I have, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Uh, Community and Government Affairs, Mr. Bell, do you have anything for us? Uh, we did not meet this month, and I have no report, but I do want to Congratulate Linden Avenue for a really strong showing tonight. That you <laughs> <laughs> the Mayor Stewardship Award, and then of course the McNulty's with the Civic Engagement Award. I had nothing to do with any of that success, but congratulations. <laughs> My report. Thank you. Zoning and planning. Uh, just... oh, I'll do it. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> Or Tim. <laughs> um, the zoning committee uh, did meet this month, um, and for the zoning hearing board report, I will toss over to Ms. Highland. Uh, thank you, Ms. Jarrett. The zoning hearing board will meet later this week on the 21st, and they'll hear three applications. The first is for the McCoaches at 644 Chubb Drive. Uh, they're proposing an, a front porch addition with a a dormer. Uh, they're requesting dimensional relief. The second application that will be heard is for 110 Southwest Street, requesting a uh, front yard setback dimensional variance to enable them to uh, build a garage closer to Mary Street than the required setback. And finally, for 686 Stryker, uh, Richard and Victoria Myers, they are requesting dimensional relief to construct a garage and uh, mudroom. 
Thank you. Um, additionally, we discussed the consideration of a pollutant reduction plan amendment. Um, attached, you can find this pollutant reduction plan, the PRP amendment, attaching stream improvements on the Font Hill Castle property to the borough's existing PRP. As part of its national pollutant detection and elimination system permit with the DEP, the borough is required to adopt a PRP, then implement specific tasks laid out in the plan. The borough adopted a plan in 2017 with the understanding that the compact nature of the borough made it physically and financially challenging to implement. The borough and the Bucks County Historical Society have since executed an MOU enabling the borough to move forward with designing stream improvements on the Font Hill property to satisfy the permit requirements. The borough is required to accept public comment and adopt any amendments to the PRP prior to submission to the DEP. The attached PRP was properly advertised for public comment. The Zoning Planning Committee recommends that Council adopt the attached PRP. If Council wishes to follow the Committee's recommendation, it can do so by motion, and I so move. Second. We have a motion and second. Do we have any questions or comments from any members of Council? <clears throat> Hearing none, do we have any questions or comments specifically addressing this pollutant reduction plan amendment from any members of the public? Hearing none. I'd like to call a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And not to force you to skip around too much, Ms. Highland, but how about the uh, HARB report? Uh, yes. The, uh, the HARB reviewed two sign applications on November 30th. The first was for 46 East State Street, and the second was for 25 West Court Street. Uh, the HARB recommended both signs for approval as submitted. At 19 West Court Street, the HARB reviewed a sign and facade improvements that would include uh, replacing the bay window with a garage style door. Uh, that was recommended for, for approval as submitted. And finally, the HARB reviewed an application for 110 South West Street. Uh, the council previously approved a certificate of appropriateness for uh, demolition of this home. Uh, the HARB recommended approval with a list of several conditions. Um, the first condition being that the, uh, the certificate be based on the hand-drawn renderings that were presented during the meeting and included in your packet this evening. Uh, that the shingles be placed on the top third of the carriage house. The second window be added on, west, on the west street side of the carriage house. Uh, that the ashlar cut stone corners will be larger stone and a lighter color, variation with light mortar and two and a half inch thickness of stone, uh, that the roofing be da Vinci synthetic slate, uh, that there are attempts made to have no gutters or internal gutters, that garage doors uh, will be painted wood to match the trim, the front door to be a grander single door, the eaves be 24 inches, Standing seam roof shall have pinch seams. The bay window and flat portico roof will have metal roofing. The chimney will be capped in slate. Uh, that the window header, cast stone, or boral will be based on the color of the stone. And finally, that the final material selections will be presented to the harp and uh, along with a new application for a certificate of appropriateness when they are ready. Thank you very much. Um, and next, we have the code enforcement report, which is in everyone's packet. And the... Oh, excuse um, me, Ms. Jared, a yes. motion is, is needed. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, to approve the um, HARP report, uh, we can do so by motion. I so move. Second. We have a motion and second. Do we have any questions or comments from any members of council? Any questions or comments from any members of the public? Hearing none, I'd like to call a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, so back to, additionally, we have the code enforcement report and the building inspection report in your packets. And that concludes the report of the Zoning Planning Commission. Thank you, Ms. Jarrett. Uh, Environment Rec, Ms. Morgolis, do you have anything for us tonight? Yes, I do. Uh, although we didn't meet, we did successfully advertise the uh, consideration of Ordinance 2022-12, regulating carry-out bags. Uh, 
attached is the ordinance banning single-use plastic carryout bags and non-recycled paper carryout bags from retail businesses, retail transactions, restaurants, and events within the borough. <clears throat> the ordinance goes fully into effect six months after adoption. This period will be used for public education to prepare resources for businesses and for the necessary purchasing and operational transitions. Businesses may request up to two six-month extensions if additional time is needed to deplete existing bag inventories. The attached ordinance was developed by the Environmental Advisory Council in coordination with the Environmental Advocacy Organization, Penn Environment, and takes into account feedback from the borough's business community. The ordinance has been properly advertised. The Environment and Recreation Committee recommends the adoption of Ordinance 2022-12 if council, council wishes to follow the committee's recommendation, you can do so by motion, and I so move. Second. We have a motion and second. Do we have any questions or comments from any members of council? Hearing none, any questions or comments from any members of the public? Hearing none, I'd like to call a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And I'd just like to say that the EAC is, is working on those educational materials and uh, is meeting tomorrow night to discuss some of that if anybody's interested. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Ms. Margolis. Uh, water utility, Ms. Jarrett, do you have anything for us tonight? We did not meet this month. And that concludes my report. <laughs> <laughs> Finance and pension, Ms. Popkin. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, happy holidays, everyone. Mm -hmm. So we've worked very hard on the 2023 budget, and the first agenda is to approve the adoption of the 2023 budget. As part of your council packet, you have been provided the copy of the 2023 budget, including all budget schedules. The preliminary budget was advertised and made available for public inspection at Borough Hall and on the website at doylestownborough.net for a minimum of 10 days prior to the final budget adoption. Copies of the 2023 budget message and summary with related charts and graphs have been prepared for the public and the press. If council ag agrees with the proposed 2023 budget, a motion to adopt and approve, the budget can be made and I do so move. Second. We have a motion and second. Do we have any questions or comments from any members of council? Hearing none, any questions or comments from any members of the public? Hearing none, I'd like to call a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The second item is the consideration of ordinance number 2022-10, setting the 2023 real estate tax rate. And attached in your packet, you will find a copy of the ordinance number 2022-10, which sets the 2023 rate tax rate in accordance with the 2023 budget that was just adopted. For the year 2023, the general purpose tax is 10.915 mills. The fire company assistance tax will be 1.7 mills. The special road fund tax is 1.5 mils. The ambulance and rescue squad tax will be 0.5 mils. And the debt service tax is 3.725 mils. This will bring the total millage to 18.34 mils. If council agrees with the proposed ordinance, then it can be adopted by motion and I do so move. Second. We have a motion and second. Do we have any questions or comments from any members of council? Hearing none, any questions or comments from any members of the public? <clears throat> Hearing none, I'd like to call a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And then the third agenda item is the consideration of ordinance 2022-11. This is providing for the regulation of water service. In conjunction with the adoption of the 2023 budget, attached, you will find a copy of the Ordinance 2022-11. This is setting the water rates for 2023 and adding a $5 per unit per quarter capital contribution fee. 
If the council agrees with a proposed ordinance, then it can be adopted by motion, and I do so move. Second. We have a motion and second. Do we have any questions or comments from any members of council? Hearing none, any questions or comments from any members of the public? Hearing none, I'd like to call a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The next item is the finance report, and Ms. Sprinker, if you could review that. Thank you, Ms. Popkin. Uh, everyone's been provided with a finance report showing prepaid bills, accounts payable, and payroll. Uh, the total for all funds is $1,231,846.96. And is, I'd like to have a motion to approve this finance report, and I do so move. Second. We have a motion and second. Uh, do we have any questions or comments from any members of the council? Hearing none, do we have any questions or comments from any members of the public? Hearing none, I'd like to call a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And that's the end of the finance pension report. Mr. Thank you, Ms. Popkin. Um, I think I'm about to set a record here. I've been on council for a number of years, and I don't remember ever having this many agenda items on, on the personal. <laughs> <so. laughs> we have five items of interest tonight. Uh, the first is the authorization to accept a council member resignation and advertise that vacancy. Attached, please find the resignation of council member Tim Brennan due to his election to the Pennsylvania House of Representatives in the November 2022 election. Borough staff recommends acceptance of the resignation as well as the advertisement of the vacancy. A copy of the advertisement to fill a vacancy for a term ending December 31st, 2023 is also attached. If council wishes to follow the recommendations, it can do so by motion, and I so move. Check. Second. Second. A motion and second. Do we have any questions or comments from any members of council? Hearing none, any questions or comments from any members of the public? <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? Who is that man out there? <laughs> I, I just want to take a second to come here today and, and just thank you all for, uh, for, for the time together and just give you some of my reflections. Of, from the time that we had uh, doing the work that we do. Uh, this job can be mundane, it can be difficult, but uh, you know, ref reflecting back on the time that I was here, uh, there's very little that I find as rewarding as the time that I spent here. So um, you all are going on to serve longer. Uh, I, you know, I, I take it as a compliment, uh, the, the reluctance to accept my resignation for as long as I've been, <laughs> been sitting on the table. I appreciate that. I, I'm not going very far away. It looks like I will have an office on, on, uh, on Main Street. Uh, Phil has already found me. Uh, John has found me. So I will be around. Um, and I've, you know, looking at this borough, I, I've spent time as a municipal solicitor. I've spent time as a, a council person. I've represented counties. I've represented cities. And, you know, you learn a little bit uh, from each of the ones you, ones you represent or work with. And, uh, you know, if I were to try and put together a formula for, uh, uh, for an exceptional borough, you know, it would, would probably include, you know, an active, engaged citizenry and consistent, informed leadership. And the borough just has had an embarrassment of riches of both of those things. Uh, from the people sitting behind this Diaz, the work that you all do, the incredibly competent people who volunteer their time as council people, uh, the staff that, that we all depend on as council people who are, <coughs> you know, I, I strain to think of anyone better than the folks sitting in this room. Uh, and I've spent 15 years in government, and they're just exceptional caliber people, some of the best in the state. So um, we're all lucky. The borough's lucky to have all of those. And then also our citizens. I mean, we're here today with stewardship uh, awards and, and talking about uh, uh, civic engagement. Uh, we have a citizenry that just floods our committees and is always here in attendance at our meetings. So um, the borough is just really, really blessed to have um, those, those, those things in our uh, you know, the, that we, we, we are just blessed to have. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy about the work that we did here together. Uh, there's so many things to look back on and, you know, just driving around town to be proud of the, the Broad Street Corridor, uh, professionalizing our police force, the work we've done with uh, environmental issues, protecting the LGBT community, surviving a pandemic. Um, you know, I have been really lucky to work with each and every one of you. Uh, you've been my friends, you've been my colleagues. Um, I know the quality of your character. I know the, the quality of your talent and, you know, I am, I'm really lucky to have served with you. Um, 
you know, this is a this is a this is a this is a great place to live, work, raise a family, and and that's that's not something that happens by accident. It's because of the the administration here, the the the, the people who work every single day and and have been here for years, uh, making sure things go right and uh, uh, and with a plan and and with execution behind it, and, and the council people that that are just exceptionally talented. Uh, and, and giving so much of themselves and so much of their time away from their families. And so I appreciate your service. I am so much better for having served with you, and I appreciate it. So thank you. Yes, and, and you will find me soon. So. <laughs> I guess. You want to let him go? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's, it certainly was a pleasure working with him over the last three or four years. Um, I've enjoyed every minute of it, and uh, I believe we have a motion on the floor. Do we want to let this guy go? <laughs> I guess we have to. Um, we'll have I'd to. like to call the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? You're off the hook, sir. <laughs> <laughs> motion passes. Um, next item on the agenda is the reappointment of a member to the Shade Tree Commission. Longtime member Christopher May has requested reappointment to the Shade Tree Commission for another five year term, effective January 1st, 2023 through December 31st, 2027. If council wishes to reappoint Mr. May to the commission, it may do so by motion, and I so move. Second. We have a motion. I heard a couple of seconds in there. Um, do we have any questions or comments from any members of the council? Hearing none, any questions or comments from members of the public? Hearing none, I'd like to call a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is the appointment of Lynn Bush as an ex officio member of the Planning Commission for the Comprehensive Plan Process. Lynn Bush has been forced to resign from the Planning Commission due to the fact that she is no longer a borough resident as of December 2022. In order to take advantage of her knowledge, and experience, borough staff is recommending that borough council appoint her as an ex officio member of the planning commission, specifically for the comprehensive plan process update process. If council wishes to follow the recommendation, it do so. It can do so by motion, and I so move. Second. We have again multiple seconds. Um, <laughs> we have any questions or comments from any members of council? I have a comment, Mr. President. I think that this is a wise uh, move on our part to keep Lynn Bush involved with the comprehensive plan. I've known her for 40 years as a, in, the, in the planning profession, and she will certainly um, continue to add uh, to the quality of the plan that we produce. So, Well, thank you. Any other comments from Council? Hearing none, any questions or comments from any members of the public? Yes, sir. I'd like to Lynn is a fine person, and I think the chance is wise to keep her involved. And it's a real asset. Well, thank you. Any other comments from the public? Hearing none, I'd like to call a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next, we have the reappointment of Civil Service Commission members. Civil Service Commission members are first appointed by the individual borough councils, followed by confirmation by the Central Bucks Regional Police Commission. Since the inception of the Civil Service Commission, the, commissions, the Commission has had two different civil service solicitors who have provided limited guidance regarding the organizational health of the CSC, which now finds itself in the position of cleaning up the appointments, especially in light of the ongoing Hannah Ho's civil service hearings. For continuity purposes, the Commission is asking each borough council to reappoint their CSC members at their December borough council meetings. The Commission will confirm their appointments at the December Commission meeting. The st statute dictates that C the CSC will consist of three commissioners, one from each borough who shall be appointed for terms of two, four, and six years. Alternate members, also one from each borough, hold six-year terms each. The Commission is recommending the CSC member and alternate below be appointed with the following motion. Do the record, due to the recording of two, four, and six-year terms not being maintained, the respective boroughs of the Central Bucks Regional Police Department are in agreement as to who will receive partial and full terms. Going forward upon expiration of each respective term, each term shall be for six years. For Doylestown Borough, the fo following reappointments are recommended. 
Steve White as a member for a four-year term expiring December of 2026, and Dennis McCauley as an alternate member for a six-year term expiring in December of 2028. If council wishes to follow the recommendation, it can do so by motion, and I so move. Second. We have a motion and second. Any questions or comments from any members of council? Hearing none, uh, any questions or comments from any members of the public? Hearing none, I'd like to call a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And lastly, we have the uh, a request from the VIA uh, to, to appoint um, a board member reappointment. Attached here to is a letter from the VIA requesting the reappointment of board member Lynn Goldman to an additional five-year term, which term would be effective January 1st, 2023 through December 31st, 2027. If council wishes to follow the VIA's recommendation, it can do so by motion, and I so move. Second. Second. We have a motion, a couple of seconds. Any questions or comments from any members of council? I have a comment, Mr. President. Um, we're two for two on the Lynn, um, the, the Lynn um, name as far as being, um, yeah, Lynn Goldman, I should say. But um, we're two for two with the Lynns tonight because Lynn is um, a, an asset to the borough and the, the VIA, and I wholeheartedly <coughs> support this. Thank you. Any other comments from the council? Hearing none, any questions or comments from any members of the public? Hearing none, I'd like to call a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And that concludes the personnel report. Hopefully, I don't ever have one that long. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! Uh, you got Chris May, Lynn Bush, Lynn Goldman. It's, it's quite a <laughs> quite a, it's a lineup. Yeah. yeah and Steve White and Dennis McCall. Yeah. yeah. I think quite a lineup. Five more qualified people have ever been appointed in a short term. <laughs> right. Like that. Uh, next on the agenda is our professionals report. Mr. Darty, do you have anything for us? Uh, thank you. I have nothing to report tonight. Okay. Solicitor's report. Bucky, uh, have thank anything? you. No report either. Okay. Central Bucks Regional Police Captain, do you have anything for us? I'm sorry. <laughs> do we, did I startle you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you should have the report in your packets. Uh, I'll just report for the month uh, and year. We have answered 18,093 calls for service. Uh, almost 1,600 of them have been in Dolestown or a uh, this month, I mean, it was 1,600. For Dolstown Borough, 996 for the month of November and 11,483 for the year. So Dolstown Borough does get the uh, large majority of the calls for service. As far as the, our expenditures for the year, we're at $6,309,021.13, which represents uh, just over 96% of our annual budget. And that's all I have to report. Thank you, Captain. Uh, I do not have anything for a President's report. Do we have any items of old business? Um, a quick uh, comment from Representative-elect Brennan, who sounded nostalgic about no longer being tasked with mundane and difficult work. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> it gets better from here. <laughs> Not. <laughs> I was never bored of counsel. <laughs> Any other items of old business? Any items of new business? Anybody have any open public comment they'd like to contribute? Hearing none, uh, we do not have an executive session tonight, and I will. Mr. President, I'm oh, sorry. I would just like to note that everybody that stayed is. is uh, we're thankful for everyone that stayed instead of leaving when, after their appointments. <laughs> Very good point. Thank you, and, and Mr. President. Uh, one thing: we have cookies up here, so <laughs> take them. That's the important part. Take them. New business. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Any other comments? Hearing none, I'd like to entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank Happy you very much. Holidays. Have a great holiday, everyone. Is that a sweet? Is that a sweet?
made it out of clay and when it's dry and ready oh dreidel i shall play oh dreidel 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 let me hear you. i made it out of clay and when it's dry and ready oh dreidel i shall play it has a lovely body with legs so short and thin a happy game of dreidel it drops in then i win oh dreidel 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 i made it out of clay and when it's dry and ready oh dreidel i shall play my dreidel's always dreidel. playful yeah, right he loves to dance and spin and when it gets all tired it drops in then i win oh dreidel 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 i made it out of clay and when it's dry and ready oh dreidel i shall play 